All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our Gamescom uh, webinar. Uh, I, I hope you can uh, you can hear me okay. Um, I'm really uh, thrilled that you are all taking time to to join us today. Um, I, I know that uh, these are unprecedented times uh, with all of us uh, working from home, um, but um, but we feel it's really important for us to to get together in this format and to to jointly discuss our upcoming shows, um, so that we'll be uh, well prepared and and well positioned to uh, to increase business as we uh, all return to a, a normal work environment. My name is Meta Peterson. I am President and Managing Director of Kölmesse Incorporated. We are the wholly owned uh, subsidiary of Kölmesse GmbH. Um, so we are the uh, sales and marketing arm for Kölmesse uh, here in the US. We are, my team and I are located here in Chicago um, and we handle all of the marketing and sales um, for all the Kölmesse events, uh, both in Cologne and around the world. Um, and our region um, includes the US Canada and Mexico. Um, so uh, let me um, uh, briefly introduce our speakers today. Uh, Darren, you are you you're moving yep. the slides, right? Okay. Um, Can you bring them up now. I, I just couldn't couldn't quite quite see, so I want to make sure I, I follow the the slides. Um, so our uh, first speaker today um, will be uh, Christoph Christoph Open, who is a sales manager for uh, for Gamescom in Cologne. Um, uh, we were actually planning to have uh, Tim Endress, um, Gamescom director, uh, participate, but unfortunately uh, he's under the weather. Don't worry, it's not the virus, but he felt that he really wasn't uh, quite well enough to participate. Uh, and luckily, uh, Christoph has uh, offered to step in. Christoph has worked on Gamescom for several years. He's been with uh, Kölmesse for, for many years now. Um, so um, he's a, a wonderful resource uh, to, to tell us about the, the latest developments for, for Gamescom. Uh, next, we will be um, uh, hearing from Daria Laval, who is project director for Gamescom Asia, um, which is uh, equally um, exciting to, um, to, to hear about uh, the launch of, of Gamescom in Asia. Um, and um, lastly, um, but, but very importantly, um, our special industry guest uh, is uh, Leah Hardy, uh, who is Vice President of Global Marketing with Exala. Uh, we're really thrilled that Leah can join us and tell us about her experience and the experience of Exala uh, exhibiting at Gamescom in Cologne um, and getting ready for the next game Gamescom as well as Gamescom Asia. Um, and um, let me also just mention that as we go along, uh, do feel free to um, uh, ask questions, uh, to send them uh, to us. That way, Darren will be gathering them and will then be addressing your various questions um, at the end of the, uh, of the speeches. Um, so before uh, we, we um, start on, on just a brief video about Gamescom, let me just briefly uh, address the COVID-19 issue. Uh, that's uh, naturally something we can't unfortunately get around. Um, and um, as you are probably aware, I know we have participants from pretty much all over the world. I know we have participation obviously here from the US, from, from all the different regions of the US. We have Canada, Mexico represented, uh, Germany, of course, uh, Singapore, um, and, and it's something that we're all dealing with. Uh, as it comes to the, uh, the upcoming Gamescom and Gamescom Asia shows, uh, we are naturally monitoring the situations in Germany and Singapore very, very closely um, in very close uh, coordination with the authorities um, and, the, and especially the health authorities um, and, and uh, we're certainly following their guidelines. Um, so as we all know, it's, it's a fluid situation um, and with that we will um, definitely uh, be able to uh, make any adjustments as, as things uh, progress. But currently both events, both Gamescom Cologne in Cologne as well as Gamescom Asia in Singapore um, are on track to, to take place. Uh, so with that, hopefully once the whole COVID-19 issue is, is over, we can get, get back to sort of actual business. And, and I think with that, we can really also focus on, on the face-to-face the -face meetings that, that we all know are, are so important for, for our business. So um, with that, let me, um, uh, let's start the uh, video, which is very brief, and then uh, we'll hand the word to Christoph. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so the video should be starting just shortly. All right, so thanks for the intro matter and thanks everyone for attending and for hearing a bit about uh, Gamescom. Uh, I have the pleasure to step in for Tim and to briefly talk about uh, our show in Cologne. Uh, I do not know who of you have uh, has been uh, to Gamescom in Cologne. Uh, if you have not, you definitely should, have, should come. Um, why is uh, this is uh, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you now. So basically speaking, Gamescom has been uh, with us since 2009. Uh, it was hosted in Leipzig before, but as uh, the whole gaming industry was booming and, and, and as gaming got more, uh, not only like a small community uh, topic, but like uh, widely represented in, in society, it grew and grew. And uh, we are very, very happy that we are hosting Gamescom now uh, over, since over 10 years. We are hosting a show in, uh, together with the German uh, Video Games uh, Association Game, uh, which is like um, uh, the voice of the industry in Germany, both on an economical as well as on a political level. We all know the discussions uh, which are going on, uh, be it youth protection, being like the gambling aspects in gaming, all those topics are, are represented by game. Um, Gamescom itself, with with every modesty uh, or um, with every uh, let's say objectivity I can give here is the largest gaming show on earth. Um, there are of course other big shows like Tokyo Game Show or G Star uh, in Korea, of course uh, the E3 in the US as well. But um, none of those mentioned shows does have a visitor count like we have. Gamescom has uh, around 370,000 visitors over all uh, trade show days, uh, which we have, uh, which makes it the largest gaming uh, community event uh, on the planet. It's also not only like a physical event. What's very, very important for us is that Gamescom has developed over the years from like a trade show event, um, like a physical event, a face-to-face -face event, also to a major media event. And one of the main reasons for this was also the introduction of uh, Gamescom opening nightlife last year, uh, which we host uh, with uh, Geoff Keighley. It's a show where we, or where a lot of our clients, a lot of, of the publishers are asked to, um, uh, to hand in their novelties, to hand in their announcements. And this is done like on the international stage in English, uh, English language. Uh, and we've had like, huge numbers in coming to worldwide streams, coming to a worldwide audience, uh, which makes Gamescom not only like a European event, but also a global event, uh, if we're looking at the streaming uh, numbers and also on the media coverage. It's also, if you've, if you've ever been there, it's a very international event. You find people from, uh, from all over the world. But of course, for you as a US client, uh, Gamescom is especially interesting because it's a hub to, to Europe, to the European uh, gaming market, but also a place to grow your business, to get in touch with your audience, um, to, to learn about the newest trends. Um, so it's not, not only like a regional event, but combined with those uh, uh, um, also online measures, uh, a worldwide event which we are hosting. Darren. Yes, so I'll give you a short overview that, uh, as I said, Gamescom is not only like the physical trade show, Gamescom has got many, many side events. So uh, if we're talking about, you know, the, the classical days for the trade show, it will be held from Tuesday, the 25th of August until Saturday, the 29th of August but um, many events are happening around Gamescom. So 
For example, on Monday, we have a big uh, Congress, uh, which is uh, called Spovis Gaming and Media. They it's more like a sponsorship Congress. It's more something where uh, brands are looking to engage with esports, for example, and looking more at the marketing side of, uh, of gaming. We do have a DEFCOM, a developer conference, which is held uh, on Sunday and Monday before Gamescom. And during, during the Gamescom, uh, we do also have uh, like a, a festival, which is held in the city of Cologne, uh, a big music festival on the streets of Cologne. Of course, you may not have the time during treasure hours <laughs> to go to the, to this festival, but uh, this should only highlight that Gamescom is more than just a trade show. It's like, uh, it, it's developing into a kind of festival. Like we do have many business side events and many events to exchange in the industry, to exchange your thoughts. And to be honest, if you, if you are looking at the current developments, also with uh, E3 being canceled, I think that this is at, at this moment, without looking too much in the future, uh, something that is even strengthening our position as industry meeting point and as uh, the place to grow your business. One thing uh, I want to put on the, on the, on the last, uh, my last sentence on this slide, we have introduced uh, Gamescom's event arena um, in 2019 for the first time. So uh, it was a wish from uh, the industry to really incorporate uh, competitive gaming at Gamescom. Of course, it was happening at different booths uh, in, the, in the past, especially at the ASL booth. But with, the game, with Gamescom's uh, event arena, we are giving competitive gaming a home. And uh, we've had, for example, Riot Games hosting uh, a tournament of the League of Legends series on Friday. Um, and also uh, large events from Deutsche Telekom, for example, um, and also some Counter-Strike tournaments going on. So this is something we have introduced in 2019, and this will definitely be uh, also uh, the case in 2020. By looking at the whole plan, you see that Gamescom has uh, quite a unique distribution. So uh, the, the purple colored areas, the purple colored halls are the dedicated business halls, which are opened on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, this is like the B2B only uh, area where um, only trade visitors are allowed. And the uh, blue colored areas are uh, Gamescom's entertainment area. So this is more the B2C part. Uh, where the public gets to try out new video, uh, video games. Uh, Gamescom's event arena is colored in red in uh, Hall 11. You see it at the left bottom uh, of this floor plan. And uh, all those areas are supplemented by a merchandise area and Hall 10.2, which can be seen as a combination between retro gaming, um, uh, family and friends, uh, a family and friends section for like smaller children coming there with, with their families and the uh, indie area where um, we have created the home for uh, indie publishers and we have special arrangements just for indie publishers to show their games uh, on like very simple uh, packages which can be bought for them. Just a quick uh, look at the numbers, uh, looking at the uh, visitors uh, on the consumer side, you see that we ha we've had constant growth uh, during uh, the last years. So uh, the show gets more and more popular. Uh, we even uh, sell out days where we are not able, due to security reasons, to let more people in. But also looking at the business side, you see that we have a, uh, a constant flow of about 10% of all those visitors uh, which are coming only for the B2B uh, section. Of course, you might say this is only 10%, but uh, of course the, the B2C visitors have more time to, to experience the show. And also um, 30,000 visitors by looking at other shows is also uh, a pretty, pretty big number. Mm, by looking um, at the next slide, you see that Gamescom is pretty international. We've had uh, a lot of pavilions, like officially organized pavilions uh, in the last year. So trade missions from all over the world. Uh, I'm very happy that um, Quebec is also with us today who uh, have organized uh, a pavilion. Also, of course, our US colleagues offer 
many possibilities starting from a co-working station to like individual options of participation and as you can see on those slides uh, Gamescom is pretty international uh, of course uh, the focus is on European countries so you see that um, the UK, uh, France uh, and Poland uh, have a pretty strong um, participation looking at the uh, exhibitor numbers but also US, the US and China is, is pretty strong so uh, we do have um, we do have many countries present and we plan on growing this even further in the future. So this was uh, everything that like just a short wrap up on Gamescom itself. Uh, the most important takeaways for me or from what, what you really should take away is that Gamescom is of course a heavily visited festival for, uh, for engaging with your customers, also for growing your business, but it also offers different possibilities with the event arena, with uh, Gamescom opening a nightlife, which makes Gamescom a truly global event. And uh, we are very happy to see you uh, in Cologne in August then. And uh, there should be any questions by this, I'm very happy to answer. Yes, yes, let me join you in, in, in that statement, Christoph, in case that there are any questions uh, specific to Gamescom Cologne, let us know. I, I know one question that, uh, that we received uh, via text was in, in terms of whether we'll be sending out this presentation afterwards, and we certainly will. Uh, we're also doing a, a video of, of the uh, webinar. We'll be sharing that with everybody. So, so people can hear my crappy English. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think it's crappy at all. I think you're doing extremely well. <laughs> Wait until all I right. start. <laughs> so with that, it's uh, your turn, Daria. All right. Thank you, Matt. Um, and uh, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for attending this webinar. Um, well, Gamescom Asia, um, we are the new kid on the block, uh, the cousin, uh, the Asian cousin of, of Gamescom. Uh, and um, uh, 2020 will be our first edition, uh, the very first edition of the event. Um, we decided to start the event uh, in Southeast Asia from Singapore uh, in, in mid-October. Uh, why Singapore? Why Southeast Asia? Um, we found that there was a gap in the market in Southeast Asia for a tier one, uh, a regional, truly true tier one event, uh, one that could uh, um, bring together consumers, but also the trade uh, side of the business. Um, there are several national events in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, in the Philippines, uh, uh, but there was not, not one uh, truly regional. Um, there are other events as well all across Asia, but again, they are mostly national events like in Japan, uh, in China, in Korea. So whenever you go to one of those events, uh, you would be, uh, I mean, you would be pretty much uh, within a national setting. Um, we found a gap in the market and we started talking with uh, our game, the owner of the Gamescom brand, uh, the German Games Industry Association, as well as with our colleagues uh, at Kalmesse in uh, uh, the headquarters uh, and uh, with the Singapore government. Uh, as Kalmesse, we have uh, our Asia Pacific headquarters are in Singapore. And uh, we also found that, that Singapore was the ideal location where to start a truly regional event of, uh, uh, you know, edition of Gamescom Asia. Um, as the, you know, the first language is English uh, and uh, Singapore is a hub for the region. Everybody likes to, you know, to travel to Singapore. Um, what, uh, what we are expecting for the first edition of Gamescom Asia is uh, 30,000 visitors, of which 10% will be trade visitors, the rest public consumers, and about 100 exhibitors. Uh, um, we are very confident, uh, of course, coronavirus permitting that uh, we will be able to meet, if not uh, most likely exceed the 30,000 visitor number. Um, as uh, we uh, basically acquired uh, an existing event that was taking place in Singapore yearly for the past few years uh, um, in, uh, you know, within the same uh, uh, slot of the year in mid-October. And this event uh, um, used to attract, uh, was mainly focused on consumers and used to attract about 25,000, 27,000 visitors per year. So it's a, it's a realistic figure. Uh, next slide, Darren. Okay, so um, here we have the agenda at a glance for the show. 
uh, will start on the 15th of October and then uh, up to the 18th of October. Um, we start with conference and workshops on the on Thursday, uh, followed by uh, the opening of the exhibition on Friday. Uh, the entire exhibition will open, but only to trade, press, and influencers. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we open the exhibition, uh, the, the entertainment side of the exhibition to the public. So if you have been to uh, Gamescom in Cologne, um, it's it's a pretty similar setting to what you would find at uh, uh, Gamescom in Cologne uh, with the trade uh, area, the entertainment area, the indie village, uh, and so on. Next slide. Um, yes, as I said, uh, I will have conferences and work, uh, conference and workshop. We have a three uh, stream conference and we are planning to also have different workshops, exhibitor talks, uh, um, we'll have uh, an emerging technologies showcase on the exhibition floor and an indie village as well, where we'll be showcasing uh, indies from the region, from Southeast Asia. Um, an esports arena, and of course, we'll have uh, our matchmaking system to ensure uh, um, you know, a conducive business environment so that you can schedule meetings uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with trade visitors, uh, with other exhibitors, uh, with any uh, you know, business partners that you want to meet uh, at Gamescom Asia. And next, um, so we are targeting, I mean, we are planning to have basically the entire gaming ecosystem in one place. Um, as I said, um, Sing I mean, Singapore and Southeast Asia in, in general uh, uh, was lacking, were lacking uh, um, uh, a trade exhibition uh, for the video games industry. There are several consumer shows, but not uh, a leading trade fair for the, for the industry. So, uh, of course, on top of the, of the gamers, uh, who are at the heart of, the, of, the, of everything we do, um, we are also planning to bring together everybody from, uh, you know, from the uh, console uh, hardware manufacturers to the publishers, uh, the developers, uh, the indies, uh, uh, those providing uh, uh, technologies uh, like, uh, you know, like Exola that we'll be hearing uh, uh, from in a while, um, to service providers, uh, esports uh, organizers, uh, um, and of course, uh, uh, media, press uh, and influencers. Uh, so these are the uh, countries that we are targeting for visitors uh, from the trade side. So um, if, you're, uh, if you're looking at consumers, like most consumer shows, uh, I expect, uh, I would say 80% of consumers to be coming from Singapore and probably, um, you know, a, a smaller, you know, 20% to be coming from the immediate uh, um, countries around Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, Indonesia. Um, that is pretty, um, pretty standard across, uh, you know, all the consumer shows in Singapore. But when it comes to uh, trade visitors, we are expecting it to be truly international. Um, for now, we are expecting, I would say, say a 50% of visitors to coming from Singapore and the rest uh, uh, from uh, uh, the region. Uh, we are actively targeting these countries, which is basically the whole of Southeast Asia, India, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, but we are also seeing a great interest uh, from all over the world. Basically, anybody who has an interest, uh, any company that has an interest in the Southeast Asian market opportunity will be coming to Gamescom Asia. So uh, we already have exhibitors like Exola from the uh, USA. We have exhibitors from, uh, um, from Japan, from uh, uh, all the way to Germany, Sweden. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a very international, and Australia, of course, is a very international uh, uh, trade exhibition. This is the hall plan. So we have six halls at uh, Suntech Convention and Exhibition Center, uh, which is uh, uh, located right in the heart of Singapore. It's one of the two um, main, uh, most popular uh, convention centers in the country. Um, we have six halls, uh, um, one dedicated to the conference. Um, uh, so to one part of the conference, uh, um, uh, to the keynote uh, and one of the streams. So the other streams will be taking place on the third floor. Um, and then the other five halls will be dedicated to trade and entertainment area. Next slide.
um, year on year growth rate. So as I said, uh, um, I mean, we found an opportunity in Southeast Asia. Um, Southeast Asia is is not the biggest gaming market in the world. Uh, um, you know, there's bigger there's a bigger market, of course, in Japan or in uh, in, in China, but it's the fastest growing uh, gaming market in the world. Uh, um, I think this is this was this slide was based on 2018 figures. Uh, if you look at 2019 figures from uh, Newzu, uh, the figure is uh, slightly decreased to around uh, uh, 17, 18 percent, if I'm not wrong. But it's still the fastest growing uh, um, uh, gaming market, video games market in the world, uh, faster than uh, uh, faster than USA, Germany, or Asia Pacific as a whole. And some market trends. Uh, so if you if you're familiar with Gamescom and perhaps even with uh, you know Tokyo Game Show in Japan, um, you will see that they are very much these shows are very much uh, console centric. So you will find a lot more uh, um, exhibitors or publishers uh, focusing on console and, and PC as well. Um, as far as Southeast Asia is concerned, uh, um, we are seeing we see a lot. Uh, uh, a larger share of the market in the mobile in mobile as um, you know aside from Singapore which is very developed uh, um, you know you have uh, developing countries like Indonesia um, or even Thailand Malaysia uh, Vietnam where <coughs> where um, uh, uh, more and more people are entering the middle class and uh, the first device uh, that they will be the first gadget electronic device uh, that these households uh, will be purchasing is a is a smartphone and that's the first uh, their first approach to with uh, video games so there will be more mobile 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 games mobile platforms at the show but we are also focusing uh, a lot on pc and console because they are also as I say, as the region grows, uh, the consumption, the purchasing, purchasing power of the population grows and, uh, you know, more people are buying PC and uh, console and uh, platforms and video games. So I think, um, yes, and then a, a little bit more on the market trends uh, on top publishers and games uh, in uh, Southeast Asia that you can have a look perhaps after this, uh, uh, after this call. Um, I mean, these are just some of the, you know, of the publishers and games that we, um, you know, that are most popular in the region. Uh, um, and uh, of course, on the on the business to business side, uh, there are, uh, and when you look at mobile uh, and uh, payments as well, especially, um, uh, uh, we, I would like to hand the, um, uh, uh, to, pass, to pass the microphone to Leah to tell us a little bit more about Exola as well and about how they have you know, they have been involved in both events. Thank you. So I'm Leah Hardy. I'm VP of Global Marketing at Exola, <clears throat> excuse me, which is where I develop and lead um, marketing strategies to fuel strategic growth in key regions such as North America, Europe, and Asia. A little bit about Exola, if you're not familiar with us, we service over 2,000 global game developers and um, publishers with solutions that help them operate better and sell more games. Some of our current clients include people like Twitch, Steam, Valve, PUBG, Fortnite, Roblox. Um, so this slide, actually these photos are from 2017 at Gamescom for Exola. Um, a little bit of history about Exola at Gamescom. We've been exhibiting at the show since the beginning, so for about 10 years now. Um, and historically, our booth had been around 40 square meters and quite frankly, really boring, as you can tell from these photos. Um, the team at the time was approaching the space as a pop-up conference room, essentially. Uh, and it just really lacked brand voice and creativity. Um, that changed when I joined the company um, and took over Global Activations. And if you go to the next slide, thank you, Darren. When I came onto the team, I saw a real opportunity to use Gamescom and its reach to help our brand. And so essentially in 2018, I used Gamescom to relaunch um, Exola to the European market and the global market. These photos um, here 
are actually from our booth in 2019. Um, but our booth in 2018 was um, very similar. Every year I try and improve it from an innovation and creativity standpoint. Um, but one of the key things is, is that even though um, our booth space um, increased to a little bit over 100 square meters, and even though the core functionality, of course, was still to operate as a conference room um, enabling business meetings, I was able to work very hard to pull in um, Exola's brand ethos and really pull up the fact that we are exclusively made for video games. Um, I worked very hard with our visuals and our messaging to, to really transform the way a B2B experience could look like. And we had tremendous success um, over the last two years since I've been running Global Activations. <clears throat> we've been able to increase the number of meetings for Exola at the show seven times, which is you know, unheard of, um, and dramatically increased preference for Exola among our target audience. Um, essentially, Gamescom really helped us um, put ourselves on the map to the global market. Um, there's a video that I'd be happy to walk people through, which is on the next slide. Um, hmm. We will see if this works. Hmm. That's that's odd. It, uh, it worked, you that. <laughs> worked <Great>. yesterday. <laughs> um, a little bit as as he's looking at the as doing oh. that. Um, for the show has been so successful for us that for 2020 we are actually doubling our booth size. So we're going to be around 180 square meters. Um, substantially more conference room space because we need it. So we've been able to scale our presence and investment at Gamescom based directly on the impact it's having for us with sales. One more moment, I'm gonna find your video. Um, another thing that we've been able, what we have been doing for the last two years with um, Gamescom is we go above and beyond just the booth experience. We partner with Gamescom and take advantage of some key media opportunities um, to really surround our target audience at the show. So last year we had um, an amazing, amazing outdoor billboard. We had some fantastic video billboard spaces within the hall, which helped direct people to us. Um, did an amazing print partnership. <laughs> Different video. You're getting um. So, um, so, 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 Leah, just, just, just out of, of curiosity, uh, as, as we get the video ready, um, how, how many staff members do you typically bring to the show? More than 40. Ah, okay. Yes, and we're, um, <clears throat> we're based in Los Angeles, but we're a global company. And so we have, have team members from Asia, as well as Europe and Russia come over. Mm -hmm. oh. It is a very huge, impressive. Yes, it's a very big show for us um, and has been instrumental in um, helping us. We used it as a backdrop, essentially, to relaunch the company two years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very nice. Um, and so, so what do you find um, Gamescom delivers that, that some of the other shows may, may not uh, deliver? Uh, I mean, we are obviously very familiar with, the, with some of the shows, large and very successful shows here in the U.S. But what, what does Gamescom do for you? Well, it, it, it definitely has the breadth and depth of um, game developers and publishers and platform partners that we're looking to meet with. Um, it has, for us, it has been our largest source of meetings. So when I compare it against other shows, um, we have the most meetings occur at Gamescom. Um, and also the fact that it's, it's not just a European market, it's grown beyond and above that over the last several years. And so um, the show works for us in multiple ways because we're reaching a target audience that is, is just not European based, although that's very, very important. <laughs> Um, it's nice to have um, the other regions seeing us and interacting. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. So, Darren, how are we doing with the video? 
I would say move on if you don't mind. And if I can get okay. it working, then we'll give her a chance to come back to it. But I wouldn't want to slow you down on the other uh, presentation. And just so you know, when people that. get this deck, the link to the video is actually in the deck. So you'll be able to look at it there as well. Yes, we'll make sure it's working before it's distributed. Okay, although it looks as if it, it uh, might be getting weighted, but, but we, we can leave it to, to everybody to, to, to view that at, at their own leisure. Um, so, so thank you so much, Leah. Uh, really appreciate your, your input and, and we certainly appreciate your, your long history with Gamescom. Um, and we, we are very excited about your participation coming up now in, in August and, and you expanding your space um, and as well as, as your plans to participate in, in Singapore as well. Yes, we do also plan to be um, at Gamescom Asia. So we're really excited about that. The Southeast um, Asia market is very important to us and we are thrilled to have um, an event there that's going to help us um, open up that market. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Leah. I really appreciate it. Um, so, so I think with that, we will uh, 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 try to wrap up uh, a little bit. Um, so uh, I would imagine that, that some of you who are not familiar with Gamescom are thinking, um, well, um, how, how could I potentially participate and what does it entail? What are the different options? Um, and that's why we uh, want to, to show this, this slide just to give you an overview of the uh, of the uh, especially the Gamescom Cologne show uh, with the different sectors uh, sort of repeating a little bit what Kastav mentioned earlier with the, the business area as opposed to the entertainment area uh, there's this, this, this specific merchandising halls and so on um, and in terms of, of exhibit options um, you can certainly rent a, a turnkey booth directly from our colleagues in Cologne um, and, but you can also rent your own space and cre create your own booth design. Uh, we here in Chicago can also help with uh, custom uh, booth design. Uh, we work very closely with uh, booth builders and, and can help design something that really meets your needs. Um, and in addition to that, um, we organize various pavilions. Um, in, in terms of pavilions for this coming Gamescom Cologne show, um, a Canada pavilion is, is uh, in, in the works. Um, as we've seen in the past, actually several times, Canada has been partner country, which was really exciting. And there was a, a really large Canadian participation. So um, with that, as I mentioned, again, the Canadian pavilion is, is being developed uh, and uh, the province of, of uh, Quebec will be participating as well. Apart from that, we here from Chicago also offer what we call a co-work pavilion, uh, which offers different types of, of options. Either you can take a, a full booth or you can take just a workstation um, or a meeting table, really depending on what, what you need. Uh, we work very closely with IGDA. Uh, they will be participating in our co-work pavilion uh, in, in, in some fashion. Um, and and um, uh, they, uh, they, they are very helpful in also uh, uh, promoting Gamescom and uh, making sure that their members also in Europe uh, participate uh, at Gamescom. Um, and uh, at the, in the lower uh, right hand corner, we are mentioning some of the, the, the prices for either a 12 or 9 square meter booth, the price for Gamescom Cologne, um, for the entire uh, Shell Scheme package, as well as Gamescom Asia, also Shell Scheme, just so you get a feel for what the, the potential cost is if, if you do sort of a, a regular Shell Scheme booth. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, there are a number of different uh, options. Um, so with that, let me, um, let me finish. I want to be uh, cognizant of, the, of our time as well. So uh, on our last slide, um, I wanted to, to mention who, who is really best to contact um, uh, here in the, in the US and, and Canada um, for, um, for both Gamescom shows. Um, Rita Domamuth is our sales and project manager for both shows. Um, and Leslie Fleck is our uh, VIP manager and also our, our special liaison when it comes to Canada. Um, so they would definitely be the, the best individuals to, to contact with specific questions. Um, we've also here included uh, contacts for, for Canada um, and for, for Quebec. Um, as well as the names uh, of our Mexican colleagues. So they are based in Mexico City and um, their, uh, their uh, physical location is uh, within the German-Mexican Chamber of Commerce, but uh, they work directly as, as part of our team. 
Um, so those are really best to contact. Um, and naturally, uh, you are also welcome to, to contact me. Um, but um, before we, we uh, end, um, I was wondering if we have any, any further questions. Is there anything that we, we've not uh, quite, quite covered yet? Nothing that's been submitted. I see. Okay. Um, very good. I, I actually had a question for you, Daria, regarding um, Gamescom um, Asia. Um, you, you showed us the, the, the floor plans and, and the overall structure of the show. Um, yeah. Are you also planning um, sort of uh, individual product zones? I know a lot of shows uh, often do that. Individual? Uh, product, product segments or product zones. As in? Um, well, like, like at Gamescom Cologne, uh, there's a special merchandising area, for example. Oh, yes, special... yes. There will be a merchandising area, yes. For uh, So we'll, uh, uh, we have the trade and entertainment area. Within the entertainment area, we'll have the eSports arena as well as the merchandising area. Uh, within the mm -hmm. trade area, we will have the, the indie village. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Yeah, well, that was just uh, one question I had. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and I don't know whether whether we have any any other questions. If uh, if not, then uh, maybe we'll uh, uh, say thank you so much to to everybody. Last chance for questions. But uh, with with that, I, I would like to thank all, all of our speakers. I uh, really appreciate your participation from all corner, corners of the uh, of the world. Um, and certainly uh, wish all of you to uh, stay safe and healthy. And uh, we look forward to, to seeing everybody uh, first in, in Cologne in August um, and, uh, and then in uh, Singapore in, in October. Thank you so much, Thank everybody. You. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks Bye -bye. for organizing and see you in Cologne in August. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.